Selling can be hard. We all know that. But you know what makes it harder than most other professions? It's the amount of emotional involvement that sales professionals are called on to deliver day in and day out. You need to replenish that. It's time to get fired up. It's time to rediscover your sales passion. <laughs> Well, welcome everyone back to our five minute sales training. If you're new here, we sure appreciate it when you hit that like button and the subscribe button too, if you don't mind. We love getting this out to even more people. Let's talk about emotion. I'm in a glass case of emotion. And I want you to think about emotion like water in a reservoir, right? A reservoir has this supply of water that's always ready to refresh when necessary. Has to be constantly refueled because sometimes you get into a drought and you need that water a lot. Emotion works the same way. There has to be this reservoir. Do you ever feel like your supply of emotion, just like a supply of water, sometimes runs dry? It's not surprising. You know why? Because you are a human being. The fact is that the process of carrying the emotion throughout the sales process is a mentally draining activity. Sales professionals are called upon to give and give and give, constantly seeking to boost and maintain their buyer's emotional altitude. And yet so often salespeople are just about getting the sale, period. They will say whatever they need to say without truly considering the emotional state of the customer. Big mistake. Price is not important. No, price is very important, actually. Okay, you got me, take me away. Okay, it's a little bit expensive, but let me tell you, it's worth it. Salespeople who lack emotional connection with their customers, they have skinny children. They don't make a lot of money. There is no business to be made out of a low supply of positive energy. But how do you do it? How do you fill that tank back up? How do you rediscover your sales passion? There's an old story I love to tell that's really helped me to answer this question. It has to do with the late Yule Brenner. He started a musical called The King and I on Broadway. But you will dance with strange man, holding hands, etc. Yes, but not always a stranger, usually a very good friend. Good, then we're not together. You show me. Teach, teach. And he performed that musical over 5,000 times. Now, you may not have a theater or its background, but really, 5,000 times? How do you get up? and excited and energetic for every single show. It's one thing to get up on opening night or for closing night, but what about show 3,486, Wednesday afternoon matinee with a bunch of school kids in the audience? How do you get out for that show? And someone asked Yul Brenner that question, and without missing a beat, he replied, Roji, seat six. You see, his point was to make it clear that his passion was not about himself. It was about the guy sitting in row G, seat six. For that guy, it's opening night and closing night. It is the only time he will ever see the show. You see, what Yul Brenner was really trying to say is that if the show was about Yul Brenner, he'd probably just mail it in, just go through the motions. But if the show was about the guy in seat G6, he had to give his best every single day. So I wanna challenge you with a really important question. How much value do you bring to the world through the job you do. Are you really making a difference? Because your commitment to making an impact on the lives of the people that you serve will go a long, long way towards rekindling that passion. I'm telling you right now, we all wanna have an impact on the people in our lives. It's what gets me out of bed every morning. It's what gives me a thrill to sit behind this desk. Let me put it another way. When we feel like we're not making a difference, what happens to our passion? It plummets in a hurry. Now here's the good news. Rediscovering your passion isn't just a mindset, it's a habit that you can build if you apply it every day. So let me just give you some suggestions. Suggestion number one, talk to your peers. Talk to your peers specifically about the difference that you make. And not all of your peers, find the ones who are passionate about what they do and let that passionate energy rub off on you. Suggestion number two, celebrate your customers' wins. 
Don't just celebrate that you got a sale. Get fired up when someone's mission is complete, when their life is improved, when they are happy that their problem is solved. And suggestion number three, fuel your brain with positive energy. Don't waste your time with negativity. I gave up on cable news a long time ago. I gave up on the doomsayers that are out there. I surround myself with positive, I fuel positive. If I've got to give out positive energy all day long, I better be eating it for breakfast and I better be snacking on it all day long. If you need that boost, I want you to take these suggestions and run with them to get fired up. Now look, I think this concept is so important that I dedicated the first chapter of my upcoming book, Maximize. Eight Daily Habits for Getting More Than Your Fair Share in Any Market. That first chapter is all about attitude. Now, the book goes on sale later this month, but you can pre-order it today. Just learn more in the link below the video. Hey, thanks as always for watching the 5-Minute Sales Training. And until next time, my friends, learn more to earn more.